On this episode, we're going to chat about keys and strategies to successful dating and relationships. But first, I want to remind you to please subscribe and share. And if you'd like to join our community, you can join us on our private Facebook group at Victoriously Living. And if you'd like to support us, please support us at patreon.com forward slash one leg up productions. Thank you and enjoy the episode. Hi, welcome to Chair Chats, the lifestyle talk show with a disability twist. I'm your host, Pauline Victoria. Today, we're going to talk with the founder of Radiant Abilities, Kathy O'Connell. Radiant Abilities empowers people with disabilities to live the life they want. Although she serves in many different areas, today we're going to focus on successful dating and relationships. Thank you so much, Kathy, for being with us here today. You're welcome, to Anna. Um, so I know that dating and relationships is a huge topic um, because it adds so much to our life. Um, I wanted to find out from you what motivated you to start working in this field. Well, one is I am a right since mental health and counselor. And my practice is primarily working with people with disabilities. And throughout the 20 plus years of counseling, the number one issue that people come to me to talk about is loneliness, wanting a companion, wanting someone to share their life with. So I had dealt a lot with that, with working with other people. And even though people would say they wanted that so much, they also felt their disability was a barrier to meeting someone, to someone finding them attractive, to someone just giving them a chance in the dating world. So I had that going on in my life professionally. And then personally, I would form a travel policy and I have been very successful in nearly every area of my life, except for dating and relationships. And I watch all my folks and girlfriends meet someone, get married, begin families, and I would send out a single. And from the from how long I've been alive, I remember wanting to be a wife, wanting to get married, wanting to be a mother. So personally, I just said, you know what? This is what I want for my life, I'm going to work through these barriers to, to get what I want. Well, what I came down to was working on myself, really, and getting myself to a point where I could have the self-esteem and the confidence to go into the dating world 
which I think requires a different level of confidence than just a general confidence because there's a whole other layer of vulnerability when we're in dating and relationships. So, long story short, I did a lot of work on myself. I went into therapy and through a lot of trial and error, because that's how we end up meeting the right person, um, I met my husband. And what really kicked me into doing this work was the experience I had in meeting my husband for the first time. And we get through dinner, and by then I was so far enough from my dating career to know that I should ask him, check in with him about how he felt about being with me. My husband does not have a disability. So I knew I had to bring it up or chances are I might not hear from him again due to unwillingness to go there. So I asked him, how are you doing with me? And big crocodile tears welled up in his eyes. And he said, I don't know if I can do this. And for a moment I took in the breath and I thought, oh my gosh, I am never going out another day again. I made my day cry, but I let it go. And I said to him, well, I understand that you have feelings and that you probably weren't expecting to ever date someone with a disability, but my disability is with me for life. That's just who I am. I, and then that's what's important. Then I said, I really like you and would like to get to know you, but you need to decide if you want to be with me. And be, I think because I was able to stand in my power as a person with a disability and not be defensive, we talked for another hour. We said goodbye. I had no idea if I would see him again. And these were in the days of pre-smartphone iPhone. And so the next day, I came home from work and put some right to my computer and my email. And sure enough, when there was an email from him, and it said, well, I still don't know if I can date someone with a disability, but you're so confident and so beautiful, I need you at least to get to know you. And that's how we began. I am so that, that story. That's amazing. <laughs> that's amazing. It, it, and I, you know, just your statement of standing in your power is so um, powerful. I mean, for a better lack of word, but it, you know, I think that's so important. And what you said about doing the inner work. And yeah. I think that, 
as somebody with a disability myself, um, who's married also, um, it really was about who I felt I was and my own self-awareness of who I was more than about what he thought about me, mm-hmm. I feel like. So um, I want to dig deeper into the quote unquote inner work that you are speaking of, because I think that's so important, especially as people with disabilities, it's so easy to, to look at everything outside of us mm-hmm. as why we aren't living the life we want or having the relationships we want. But when it, it really comes down to what's happening inside of us and that how much of an impact that can have on the experiences we have externally. Um, so I guess the question is, um, what is the inner work that must be done in order to have a successful relationship? Well, it may sound really cliche, but I think it's really true. You really need to feel good about yourself, who you are, who you are as a person with a disability, and be comfortable with being different. Be comfortable with not doing what everyone else does, not looking the way everyone else does. And not only being comfortable with that, but really honoring who you are, what you look like, how you do things and giving value to that because when we can value ourselves we then approach relationships from a point of desire and wanting to be with the person rather than the need of trying to fill us up trying to give us the value that we're looking for. Oh, that's so good. That's such a great distinction of understanding our value and rather than looking on the outside to validate who we are. Right, right. And if I can say, I think, although I always say this, we're making progress. There's a lot of work to be done, it's eventually around sexuality and disability and really seeing people with disabilities as sexual and relationship partners. And I think, one, we got to be very upfront on it, that there is still very present in society and go out there and be attractive and sexy and full of potential anyway because that's how we're going to change things. That's how we'll transform the minds and hearts of people. Yeah. Well, and you know what? Even if you just took the disability factor out, women in general have a hard time being confident in valuing who they are as women um, because we're fed this image in the media of what sexy is and what attractive is. And um, and oftentimes uh, getting the uh, value from our friends based on who we're with you know, in the partner that we have. Um, I, you know, I, I I would love to follow the rabbit, go down the rabbit hole a little bit more with you and your husband. So after he was like, I don't know if I can do it, but I do find your confidence attractive. So I need to keep going. Like how much 
further or longer did it go before he was like, I'm hooked. I can't, I can't <laughs> not date you. Oh, well, okay. So we, I live, we live in Upson Date, New York. We began dating at the beginning of summer, which is a prime time of year up here. Lots to do. Good time to begin dating someone. So we would go out every weekend. And me, being the eternal theorist, at the end of nearly every date, I would say, so, how are you doing? <laughs> how are things going with your comfort level? And for literally like the first two, three months, he would say, I, I don't know yet. And then in the next breath, he would go, so what are you doing next weekend? I knew we were heading in the right direction with that. So I would say it took about just about two or three months for him to get to that comfort level. And, and he will say that it's mainly because I am so comfortable in who I am and like if when we are out in public, you know, people are always gonna look at me. They're stare at me, they hear my voice, turn their head. But I don't really see it because it it's gone on all my life. And I'm just so focused on who I am, who I'm with what I'm doing. So that him watching me helped him have the confidence to be with me. Did he get any sort of um, criticism or concern from family and friends for dating you? From his family or my family? His family. Uh, his family was actually very supportive of, of the whole idea. Um, and I think his mother said something along the lines of, if she makes you happy, who cares? Um, so they were very supportive and my husband, not so much now, but when we began to date, he was that same confident in himself, a little more shy, and his family really liked that I was outgoing and confident, and they believed that I actually helped him to become more confident. Oh, nice. The student became the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, and it demonstrates the value that people with disabilities can bring to relationship with those intangible qualities like determination, problem solving, you know. Mm -hmm. Yes. So um, in your own personal experience and in um, your observations working with clients, what are three pitfalls that you see people with disabilities having when it comes to dating and relationships? Okay. Well, I actually have a, a online survey that people take. And the num one of the most frequent answers that I get to the question of what are your fears and concerns 
about dating with a disability um, is I don't feel attractive in someone. Second is I don't have the confidence to date. And the third is that they are concerned that they will not find someone who will accept their disability. Okay. So if we took each of those, uh, the first one being, I don't feel attractive. What is something that uh, one could do to feel more attractive or work on that pitfall? Well, I, I actually teach dating and relationship classes that I have an online course. And one of the concepts that I teach is what I call the power to attract. And that is helping a person identify their positive attributes whether they're physical or emotional. It may be a good sense of humor. It may be I have great hair. Um, it could be I have a good body. Whatever their, their attribute is, I help them to think that that's their power to attract people to that and to focus on those positive attributes and develop them more because that will pull people towards them. Mm, yes. yes. I, if I could say with the attraction, I also work with people on how your disability cannot make you unattractive. And that it's really a thought in your mind that we can then transform. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. I've actually seen that happen. I had a friend and I didn't know her very well at the beginning. And as we started to get to know each other, I, like literally it was like her, she was physically transforming, like becoming more pretty. And it was just amazing. Mm -hmm. to, I was like, wow. Um, so it's amazing how her um, personality and her own self-confidence actually made her more attractive. So I thought that was right. a really interesting experience I had as a young person. Uh, yeah. So I, I kind of felt like, oh, maybe beauty is from the inside out. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I know we can't solve self-confidence in a couple minutes. That's something that has to be worked on and worked on and is often a, a lifelong um, work, uh, even for myself, who I feel is very confident, but I know there are some areas that I even lack confidence in. But if we were just to look at confidence, which is the second pitfall that you mentioned, what would be two things that someone could do to work on their self-confidence? Well, one of them is I'm a big believer in positive affirmations and training your brain to think positively about yourself. And feeding your brain, yourself, your person with good, positive statements about yourself um, will be one. And then I really have people look at their own personal value that they will bring to a relationship. And because, for example, if someone has a physical disability and they want to be a parent, um, then that may be an issue that needs to be worked on 
in the relationship because there may be many limitations um, with child rearing and taking care of a child. So what can you do? What can you contribute as a parent? What can you do to maybe balance out what your partner may need to do more of to compensate for what you're unable to do? So helping people to focus on the value Again, it may not be tangible right away, the value they bring to a relationship. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, before I go to the third pitfall, I, I do uh, know that that's something I struggled with, you know, and, and I always was so grateful. Oh, thank you, husband, for doing the dishes, doing the laundry, cleaning the house, making dinner, working, you know, it was just like, I felt like, it was so unbalanced in terms of mm -hmm. what we each brought to the relationship and contributed. And he would always be like, that that's nothing to compare to what you bring to the relationship. Um, and it is so intangible. It's almost really hard to put words to it. Um, right. Right. But, um, but he loves it. So <laughs> 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 who am I to argue? <laughs> Um, okay. Thank you for that. So positive affirmations and understanding the value you bring to a relationship can help, um, make our self-confidence increase a little bit. So with the third pitfall of, um, not finding someone who would accept you and your disability, how do you address that? Well, um, basically, the bottom line is I do teach them if someone doesn't accept your disability, they're not someone that you should be with. However, I do teach because of my own experience with my husband that initial discomfort doesn't equate into rejection. And that you gotta be strong in yourself to kind of sit with that that's in comfort for a bit. And that the person work through that it, when they're willing to. Um, but I do teach that ultimately they need to accept you as you are or it's not going to work. And a, a portion of what I teach is actually focus around teaching people when to leave a relationship because they think that people with disabilities are still very conditioned not to be the one to decide to end a relationship. So I teach about what to look for in the healthy relationship and that you don't have it to feel empowered to leave. And then obviously someone not accepting your disability would be a deal breaker. It should be a deal breaker. Yeah, yeah. No, that's amazing because um, I really appreciate that because, uh, you know, I think as people with disabilities, we are like just grateful that someone would even want to date us. So you yeah. don't want to mess it up because who else would want to date you if, if you left that person? But yeah. if you understand yeah. your value as an individual, you can stand in your power and know what's, what the boundaries are and, 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 and setting those and sticking to them. I want to uh, do a shameless plug for Radiant Abilities because you know all of the things that we're speaking to 
whether it be your attractor factor or working on your self-confidence, um, setting those boundaries. Radiant Abilities is a great um, organization that can help you do that because sometimes we need help having others show us ourselves, like holding up the mirror so we can look at ourselves in an honest way. And then when we do that, we can really um, work on, a, on the different areas that we need to work on in order to have the life that we want. Mm -hmm. um, so Kathy, where can people learn more about Radiant Abilities and get in touch with you if they wanted to work on themselves with you? Radiantabilities.com is the website. Um, and for those who are looking for digging resources, I have a whole page within the website just on dating resources um, for people. They can contact me through Kathy at Radiant Abilities or that uh, contact form right within the website. That's awesome. That's really awesome. I'm a big believer in having life coaches and, you know, just getting um, assistance from other people because it's really hard to see yourself when you're in the frame. So right. and we all grow so much with other people helping us. Absolutely. And that you have a disability yourself. So you have the experience right. um, is such a plus. Thank you, Kathy, for being here with us today. This is just the tip of the iceberg. So I'm going to encourage you, the viewer, to check out Kathy's website at radiantabilities.com and start working on you. And I'd love to hear what your thoughts are about dating. What has worked for you in the dating experience? And how do you work on you? Please comment below and share with us. And if you'd like to get more involved in our community, join us on our private Facebook group called Victoriously Living. And if you'd like to see more programming from One Leg Up Productions, please support us at patreon.com forward slash One Leg Up Productions. Thank you so much. And until we meet again, be blessed.